So I've been making these sort of neural funky base stabs today, and I kind of want to talk you through the process of uh, everything I do to get to an end result like that. So I usually start with Serum. I just find a nice little wavetable and kind of apply an envelope like this to the volume. Now that sounds kind of lame, but we'll start adding more stuff to it until it sounds uh, nice and squelchy. So one thing that I'm after for these plucky sounds is uh, for the high end to be very intense, but to go away pretty quickly. So I'm going to add a bit of a low pass filter. I want that low pass filter to go down faster, so I'm going to adjust the curve. Yeah, that's better. I also want to add maybe some noise for extra top end crunch. Now that's too too much to stay in, way too much, so I'm just going to drag the curve down as well. And that's immediately much cleaner. Um, so I'm looking to get a lot of high-end information around the peak of the LFO, but then towards the tail, it, it just it's just mostly going to be like sub and like mid-range stuff. I'm also going to turn down this phase knob because I'm going to try some uh, FM stuff. And for FM stuff, phase matters a lot. It has like a big impact on the sound. So um, I try to uh, keep the phase consistent to kind of keep my sound consistent so that every time I hit a note, it's going to sound the same. You can get some nice FM texture from that. So maybe. Something like this works nice. Uh, unfortunately, FM kind of has a tendency to reduce your fundamental frequency in relative volume. So I'm just going to add a little more sub. Uh, and this gives us a nice opportunity to also give the sub more sustain by dragging that curve up. That sounds nice. Now, this doesn't pack as much punch as I would want it to. Uh, and you can like add compressors or transient shapers or whatever, or like do some more crazy volume envelope. But one trick that really easily pumps a lot of like low end punch into your sound is just using kind of an envelope like this and just throwing it on the, uh, the master tuning. So the effect isn't super obvious if you just listen like this, but if you listen to the sound through a low pass filter to really kind of focus on the subs, then you'll really notice the added punch. So that's with, and then that's without. So you hear that it has much more punch in the low end uh, by adding a, a volume envelope like that. Now this is still pretty boring, so I'm gonna add some stereo effects. I like to click this uh, button to change it to a high pass filter in the chorus and then kind of listen to the wet signal. So that just adds kind of a bit of butter to the top end transient and it kind of gives it this spatial effect, uh, which is quite nice for the transient I feel to be kind of wider on bass sounds because usually on drums your uh, transients are very much mono so having a bit of stereo width um, happening on or around the transient of your bass sound can really help set it apart in the mix. The combs filter kind of adds a nice texture but I don't like it for the entire sound so I'm just going to try to hmm, that isn't really working out. Yeah, like this, it adds a nice bit of flair. It's a bit more space, a bit more diffusion on that transient. Um, now at this point I want to start uh, distorting the sound kind of hard.
I think like that is actually a good place to start. And then from here, we can start the post processing. So if you take a look at what we work with right now, we can see that it's still a very dynamic sound. And that could give us some problems later on when we're going to start uh, distorting the sound more and more. Um, because this part of the sound is going to receive a lot of distortion, whereas this part isn't going to be very distorted at all. And the reason, of course, is because uh, distortion, the amount of distortion depends on the input volume. And over here, the volume is much higher than over here. So one thing that I like to do is just kind of... absolutely crush the sounds basically so you can see that now my waveform is like a total sausage so the distortion is going to happen like pretty evenly across the sound i feel like ableton's amp can sometimes get a really nice crunch to your uh, top end transient make sure to set it to jewel mode so you have a stereo signal now that's like way overblown, so it takes a bit of fiddling with these gain knobs in the uh, EQ to kind of get it distorted in just the right way. So this is cool, but at this point I'm thinking that the kind of high end lasts a little bit longer than I would like to. So I'm going to try to go in here and see if there's anything I can do to fix that. So I can maybe make these curves steeper. And also maybe uh, the chorus feedback. Yeah. Just turn that down. And the resonance on the columns filter as well. So this is kind of getting there, but I feel like a lot of these neuro stabs have uh, quite a squelchy and slimy quality to them. So the way to achieve that is to use a vocoder. And you can also hear that that really affects the, uh, the high end. Gives us a lot, much less sustain on those high frequencies, so. So that cleaned up the sound in a very interesting way. Uh, it made the top end much, much cleaner and really just leaves us with just a transient in the top end. And for the rest, it's pretty much nothing. So to add a bit more mid-rangey body to the sound, I'm going to use Trash 2. Try to see if I can bring out any interesting textures. Um, I'm going to start with a top end, actually, because I want to see if I can... If I zoom in here and use the wave shaper, do something like this. Really crunch it up. Now that's way too loud, so... Yeah, the Elastic Trash algorithm really gives me some kind of slapback feeling on the top end, which I really like. So I'm going to keep that. Let's try some, try the same algorithm actually for the uh, mid band. Oh, it makes it too flabby, maybe. So now I found something that kind of adds a little a little bit of extra body to the sound. You know, without it, it's just sub and high end, but just fills out the harmonics a bit more. To saturate the sub just a little bit as well to get a little more, a little more boom out of that. Um, now I'm going to go into the Convolve stuff to see if I can like find some cool amps or whatever and uh, maybe just use one of these tone ones. Ooh. Yeah, 
Yeah, so this combination of uh, this body impulse response and the ribbon mic really makes some interesting things happen. So you can really hear how the convolution module really changes the entire character of the sound. And so that's kind of the thing with neuro sound design. It's like, if you just use like very subtle effects, it's going to take you very, very long to uh, to get to an interesting sort of neuro sound. Um, so what I do for a lot of these processes is I use really extreme processors. I use like this crazy multiband distortion. I use convolution. I use a vocoder. I use this crazy amplifier. And all of those really uh, change the sound very dramatically. Um, and the reason I want to change the sound so dramatically every time is because I want to get as far away as possible from something that you would just hear straight out of a synthesizer. Like I don't want someone to listen to this and go like, oh, that's a synthesizer. I want someone to listen to this and be like, what kind of unholy creature made that noise? That's ultimately with kind of neuro basis, that's my goal. So if you just like turn off all of these effects, we can kind of hear the evolution of the sound and how every time I add a new plugin, I'm really taking the sound and just flipping it on its head and, and doing something crazy with it. So this is pretty much what we started with. Then adding a bunch of crunch. Then taking that away again with the vocoder and exchanging it for a bit more of a liquidy, slimy texture. Then after Trash 2, with the convolution module, we're really sort of pushing this sound through this membrane. So now I want to add just a bit more distortion because I want to get some more tone out of this, so... Okay, so now with the distortion, I've added in some pretty subtle harmonics. I'm going to try to pull those out with OTT. Get a pretty interesting sort of almost FM kind of sound at the tail there. Kind of warms into that, that's interesting. So yeah, this is what we have right now. And at this point, we can just kind of start resampling this uh, so we can like expand our sample libraries. And we can also just go into Serum and start messing with the LFO that we initially made. So we started with kind of a stabby thing, but we can also just like drag this note over here and now we get this. <laughs> That's wild. Pretty interesting rising sound. Can make even crazier shapes if we want to. Here we kind of like double up the transient so we get this double flam sort of effect. It's quite nice. I find that if you play around with it, you can sometimes find these sweet spots where you get a texture that's very, very different from anything else in the sound. So around this level on the LFO, we get like a nice noisiness to it but it doesn't go all out like transient kind of. Another nice thing to do with the LFO is we kind of have this long tail. We can also exchange that for a very short tail. And then might maybe do like a bunch of them. So yeah, that's pretty much how I make these sort of neuro stab sounds. If you enjoyed that, I've also posted these samples I showed in the beginning in my Discord server. So if you want to, you can join the server, download those, and have a chat with me about snares or whatever. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and bye-bye.